Today in the news, we have an epic surprise, a 10 core Intel and a new case. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. Earlier this month, they shook the server space with their full Zen 2 based Epic Rome lineup. CPUs going all the way up to 64 cores that beat Intel's offerings for a much lower price. Well, it looks like they weren't done with Epic Rome because a new CPU was just announced, the Epic 7H12. This new entry will still have 64 cores and 128 threads, but it will come in at a much higher base clock of 2.6 gigahertz compared to the 2.25 of the current top of the line epic the 7742 the boost clock is also a little lower at 3.3 gigahertz this cpu will also have a much higher tdp of 280 watts compared to 225 for the 7742 now if a chip with these clocks has a tdp of 280 watts i think it's safe to assume that threadripper 3 will not feature a 64 core variant last week gamers nexus received information that threadripper 3 mother boards and CPUs would be split into two different categories. One is the STR4 platform with CPUs containing four Zen 2 chiplets for a max core count of 32 cores. And the other platform is SWRX8, which will be used with CPUs containing eight chiplets for a max of 64 cores. The reason why I say that 64 cores probably won't happen is because Threadripper tends to have much higher base and boost clocks compared to Epic. This would increase the TDP well over 300 watts since the 64 core Epic is already at 280. And as we saw from uh, Gamers Nexus leaks, motherboards for Threadripper will have a thermal requirement of 280 watts, which means AMD won't be making a CPU that consumes more. So I will stand on my prediction that the new Threadripper will have up to 48 cores for the simple fact that it's codenamed Shark's Tooth and White Sharks have a first row of 48 teeth. Speaking of high-end desktop chips, Intel also made the news with a leak of their upcoming Cascade Lake X CPU, the i9-10900X. That's how I'm going to say it. That's it. It's set in stone. A Geekbench benchmark was found for the 10-core CPU, and well, there is very little improvement on the performance side. In fact, it looks identical to the 9900X it's going to replace. Now, at least Intel is set to change the pricing for the new generation of HEDT chips. If we look at the MSRP for the 9900X, it's about $1,000, so this CPU will probably land in the 500 to 600 range. It is going to be an odd CPU though. Comet Lake, which is also coming up, will feature a 10-core CPU, so the 10900X might be another 7740X situation. Actually, no, nothing was worse than the 7740X. In any case, with the current offerings from AMD and the upcoming ones, I don't even know if a 10 or even a 14-core Intel CPU at 14 nanometers would still be considered high-end desktop. Also with Intel, the 400 series motherboard naming scheme has been found through multiple EEC listings. They actually made some changes too. It looks like overclocking boards will no longer have the 70 number in the end. Instead, it will move up to 90 with Z490. This is probably to differentiate their product from AMD's because, I mean, AMD uses 72 and they already have a 470 board. Also, the boards ending in 50 will be replaced for 60. Once again, probably because of AMD. Right now there's the H410, B460, Q470, H470, and Z490. In any case, it's a new chipset for another CPU refresh, so yeah, absolute garbage. In case news, Fractal Design just introduced a new case called the Vector RS. The company says that it's a hybrid between the Define R6 and Define S2. I'm just happy they released something that doesn't look like everything else they've released in the last five years. It has an angular design with an ARGB LED strip that goes from the front all the way to the top. It has a tempered glass side panel and also one at the top, which can also be replaced to a more airflow oriented panel, which makes sense. The blocked off part here is is what allows for multiple drives at the front. It kind of reminds me of an H440 from NZXT. I gotta say though, while the case looks good, the ventilation isn't great. It's probably gonna be hotter than all of the other defined cases that are available. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Moving on, Huawei was supposed to hold an event tomorrow to talk about a few new products. Well, the whole thing got leaked online. First is the Mate 30 Pro. It looks like it has a few cameras at the rear with the flash on the uh, edge of the phone. It also has a notch. Yeah, 
no comments, moving on. They also have the Watch GT2. Honestly, it looks really good. Also in wrist accessories, they have a new fitness band. That really looks like something that I want. It doesn't look good, but it has all of the features that I want out of a fitness band. It's a small and I've been looking for a replacement for my Apple Watch. They also have a new TV that'll be announced, which features a selfie cam and a new media pad tablet. It's pretty sad. Usually, you know, you'll have the phone leaking out before the event, but not the whole lineup up like it did now. And lastly, as a bit of improvised news, because I don't have a script for that one, uh, Rockstar Games just announced a new uh, game launcher. So yeah, another game launcher on your computer. Yay. But I mean, at least you get San Andreas for free for PC. So if you want the game, uh, you can register and get the game. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions or comments, put them down below. I'll be there all day. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. By the way, YouTube has changed the uh, subscribe uh, display thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, it just changed. That's it. Somebody asked that I stop talking after the screen goes black. I never will.